All right, what's up, friends? It's Ben Landers, and uh, in this webinar, we're going to be going over some of my favorite at-home physical activities. Uh, before we get started, just want to apologize for any ambient noise, uh, birds chirping. I had to get out of my house to uh, try to get some quiet, but then I'm realizing it's also very loud outside, and there's some kids screaming at the uh, daycare that's near my house as well, so you might hear some of that. But that's part of teaching from home. You got to learn to be flexible. So um, as we're all kind of in this COVID pandemic, school's been canceled. These are kind of some of the things that I've come up with, some of my favorite resources. And um, let's go ahead and get started. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ben, like I said, and I've been teaching since 2007, uh, teaching at the same school for the past 13 years. And it's a K-5 school. There's about 550 to 600 kids there. Um, the name of the school is River Springs. You can see a quick picture of my gym down there in the bottom. And I started a website in 2014 to be able to share ideas with teachers and um, try to help be a part of the movement to move quality phys ed forward and uh, just share best practices and try to help each other get better. So you can check that out at thefewspecialist.com. And if you have any questions or anything after the, uh, the session, training you can hit me up on any social media of your choice it's uh, at the p specialist pretty much anywhere and um, all those links are also on my site cool let's get started oh before we do can't waste a good uh, chance to show off my beautiful family as you can see i got three small kids right now uh six and under so um we are definitely in it right now as we are trying to work from home do the homeschool with my kindergartner and um it's a lot of fun. Definitely a, a fun, busy, tiring uh, stage of life. So uh, first of all, I just want to say I really respect you guys. Um, anybody that's willing to give up some of their time to try to learn and try to get better um, is the kind of person that is uh, the, the picture that we need for phys ed. The person that's trying to learn and get better is... Um, the kind of people that's going to help move our profession forward. And uh, so thank you for being here. Thank you for being willing to uh, be a part of the quality PE movement and to try to get better and to do your best to, um, to help your kids and uh, help create better movers. So I appreciate it. I'm one of you and um, have some of the same passions, have some of the same frustrations that you do. And I hope this is really, Oh, I don't know what just happened. Uh, I hope this is a helpful session. I hope you get some things out of it. Um, first of all, I think we can just start by saying, uh, nobody really was prepared for this whole at home PE thing. Uh, I know at least in my school, we didn't have any framework set up. We didn't, uh, have like a PE Google classroom or anything like that. Um, and so we really caught by surprise. There's no experts in it. We're all just trying to figure it out as we go. Um, and I think, you know, most of us can admit that PE online is not ideal, um, even more so than a lot of the other subjects. Uh, PE is a lot harder to do online because it's such a physical subject. Um, and it's really hard to assess unless you're um, teaching older students. You might be able to have them submit videos or something like that. Um, but let's just go ahead and put that disclaimer out there. And I'll, I'll say for myself, I'm definitely no expert. And there's a lot of people out there. They're probably much better at than me that already had systems set up to be able to have like online teaching. Um, but these are the, some of the things I've done and um, what I think uh, some really good resources online are. And uh, I always like to say before any presentation, take what works to trash what doesn't. You know, we're different people in different scenarios with different students. And if you can get a few ideas um, out of this that can help your students and help you become a better teacher, then I would call that a win. So first up, let's just uh, talk about dareread.com. Um, many of you have probably seen this, but um, also I, I'm going to export this uh, slides as a PDF and you can click any of the graphics. It'll take you to the website. Um, and uh, so this is just a really great resource um, like for anybody, but if you're looking for something to give to students who don't have internet access, that was my main use for this was you can go and you can go to the workouts page and uh, filter the workouts based on your kid's skill level. I teach elementary, so I was doing the easy workouts and you can do, um, you know, any kind of focus that you want to. 
You can do all different kinds of equipment or no equipment, which is what I did. And then you can just pick one that you think would be good for your students. And um, they're free printable workouts. So I just um, included a couple of these in my take-home packet. And I made some notes like kindergarten, try to do two rounds, kind of like they have the levels here. I made my own levels at kindergarten, try to do two rounds, you know, second and third grade, try to do three rounds. So you can kind of figure out what you think a good number of um, rounds for your students would be. But Derby is a great free resource for you. Um, kind of print and go. If you don't have internet, that's a good one to check out. Let's see another one. Swerkit.com. Swerkit is a little bit more of a, uh, I wouldn't say it necessarily advanced. It's just more time consuming. So for Swerkit, you can, oh, I got to get out of this. Hold on. You can do, um, sorry, I should have logged in ahead of time. Hopefully it'll just log me right in. You can create a free account and um, they also have an app that you can use and the app will allow you to access the same um, features as the website, but you can go and create a free account and look at the kids' workouts. And then they have like a bunch of um, workouts already created, and then you can also customize it. So the cool thing about Swerkit is the customizations. Um, so if you click over here on custom workouts, you'll see I already have a couple that I, that I have created um, myself. And if you go, if you wanted to create a custom workout, you can click on any of the ones that you want to start with and then just go to customize over here and um, copy and edit the workout. So it copies one that's already created and then allows you to like add exercises, take exercises away. Like if you wanted to take one out that you didn't like, just hit the X button. If you wanted to drag one up from any of these 822 exercises, you just hit the plus button and it adds it in. And then you can also um, change like the order that they're in. Like if you don't want to have two stomach exercises in a row, you can change the amount of time, change the name, hit save. And then whenever you go into the workout, it looks really clean. You can choose the time that you want. It has uh, music and you can choose like if you want to do a warm up or a cool down. Um, but I just love how clean it is how clean it is <laughs> and um, it has kid examples. So that's one reason I love Swerk it. And also the customization ability is really, really great. Um, and I've got a YouTube video on my um, site. That's like the notes page for this that kind of walks you through how to do that. So you can check that out if you want to. Um, let's see. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because I'm going to be scrolling around here. So next up are some of my favorite YouTube resources. And these are great, even if you're not doing at home virtual uh, PE, they're great for if you have a screen in your gym and you're looking for some ways to integrate some YouTube videos into your gym. These are some of my favorite resources for that as well. So uh, we got three workout channels. I know this one would probably be a little, some people will probably be frustrated that I put this in here. Um, this is a fitness coach that has during this pandemic declared, uh, that he's doing PE every morning. Um, but I included it cause he, d he really does have some great workouts. He's upbeat. He's positive. He's trying to make a good change. Um, but he's not a PE teacher. So we'll do that disclaimer right there. Um, but then these are also the same thing, just fitness videos. So quick workouts, fitness blender is one of my favorites, um, just because of how clean and nice it looks similar to how Swerk it looks. And, uh, if you go to their YouTube channel, You'll be able to search for anything that you want over here on the search bar. So like, let's say you just wanted a quick warm up. Um, and then you can pick any of these videos that shows you these are all about five minutes and similar to this work they have a white background. So they shoot it on the green screen. It's really easy to see and follow along. And, um, I use a lot of those for, uh, PE class warmups. I probably use maybe three or four a year for our, our kids to warm up with. Um, and then another one is Glenn Higgins fitness. So this is another fun YouTube channel. And this one is going to be, um, more like superhero themed. Um, so like if you scroll down, you'll be able to see a star Wars workouts, Spider-Man workouts, Captain America workouts, and it's all just interval training. So he's doing, um, let me see if he has any exercises in this preview. 
doesn't look like it. They're going to be doing basic, uh, basic movements. So you can see he's doing like squats, but he calls it web slingers. So it's fun for the kids. It gives them a theme to work out to do. Um, and just another way to make fitness fun. So it's a good one that I like. Um, and let's keep it moving. PE with Joe, you can go check it out. It's just a guy in his living room, basically doing exercises. Um, and then another great, uh, thing or resource, especially during this time when kids are stuck at home and we can kind of promote some of that emotional well being in addition to the physical is yoga. Uh, and I'm no yoga expert, so I will default to these. And, uh, once again, fitness blender, if you just go search in the search bar, there are yoga videos, cosmic kids is a great, uh, for younger kids. My daughter's six years old and she loves doing it. They have like themed yoga workouts, uh, frozen, all the popular movies, trolls, Harry Potter. Um, and then this one is a little bit of a, uh, shorter one so like if you just wanted to give like one movement you can check this out and most of the videos are a little bit shorter like two minutes and they just show like a couple of different yoga movements so check any of those out that you want to those are good ones uh dance videos always a good option to uh just you know sometimes kid needs a dance go noodle is one of my favorites we use that a lot in pe i'll use it as a reward uh, for my younger classes if they follow their expectations we have a little bit of time left at the end We'll do a quick go noodle video and these are all just uh, follow the leader style videos. So Google just dance and you can see any of the just dance video game uh, videos that you could have kids follow along to. And it shows you the moves down in the bottom corner of the screen. Go noodles, just short little uh, brain boost, brain break type activities. And then of course, any line dances. So one of the things I did in my take home packet for my kids was included a couple of videos that we had learned the dances to that year like the sid shuffle and the cupid shuffle um i included a link to the song on youtube and then also a link to a tutorial in case they needed a refresher and i asked them to teach their parents about it so um line dances are another good one to try out these are two other uh great virtual resources. So more dance resources, less mills is kind of like exercise, uh, dance exercising, and they have nice clean videos similar to fitness blender and Swerkit. with the green screen background. They got a lot of kid examples as well, upbeat. And, um, over here, this is hip hop public health. Similarly, it's more of a less like workout and more just teaching dance. Um, from what I've learned, so you can just learn different dance moves and a lot of kids are into that. Uh, right now, especially with TikTok being so big, learning different dance moves. So those are some like exercise, just movement uh, resources. But I think one of the things that is a big conversation right now with phys ed is like with all the virtual learning, most people are just doing the exercise because that's the easiest thing to do. But a bigger part of the phys ed curriculum is learning skills and just being, you know, the full all around uh, competent mover that's going to be able to jump in and play a game or do a sport or something like that. Um, and so that's kind of what I tried to focus on with my take home packet for my kids. I did include some of those resources for the exercise um, because I know some parent, a lot of parents are overwhelmed and going into this, I know as a parent, I can attest to the fact that homeschool is really hard for kids and for parents, especially if you have multiple kids at home, <coughs> excuse me, um, and so I included optional like five minute videos and then I um, included a bunch of follow the leader style uh, skill videos, which I'll show you in a second. But another thing to take into account is a lot of kids don't have things at home like jump ropes or um, balls or things like that. So if you go to YouTube and you just search for DIY, whatever it is that you're looking for, I've included a few examples here, scoop and catch game out of a milk jug, uh, jump ropes out of plastic bags, jump ropes out of t-shirts. They can make their own equipment at home if they want to. Um, so you can do that as well. So these are some examples of skills videos. So luckily for me, I had a lot of uh, video resources already up on YouTube. So I was able to utilize those during this time. And um, one thing I've tried to do on my site is video uh, myself teaching 
because for me as a teacher, the most helpful thing and the thing that helps me uh, get better and reflect on my own teaching practices when I see other teachers post themselves teaching. Um, and so since I enjoy watching other people teach, um, I, that's the main thing that I try to put out online is just examples of myself teaching um, because that's the most helpful thing for me as a teacher. So I linked up things like jump rope tricks. So this is a video where I kind of go over all the different jump rope tricks that we learn in our jump rope unit. Um, I just said, hey, get a ball, throw and catch with a partner in your backyard or against the wall for 10 minutes. And I linked up the video where I go over how to throw and catch a ball to give them a review of the cues. Um, Links up the push-ups and the curl-ups to say, hey, practice your push-ups, practice your curl-ups. Here's the videos in case you forgot how to do it. Um, and then follow the leader videos for basketball and um, ball handling. And then also how to throw a frisbee and how to do balloon challenges. Um, another thing I did is uh, in our my website has this membership program where we have these follow the leader videos that are kind of like shot on a green screen. And so I made a little um, page for my kids at school using those videos as well. Um, and then these are um, some other uh, PE teachers that are some great examples. And on the handout, if you click on the uh, graphic, it'll take you right to their YouTube page. <coughs> There's a ton of people sharing awesome lessons online right now. Um, these are just some great ones that I saw early on that kind of jumped on and started sharing stuff. Um, but there's no need to recreate the wheel. I mean, if people are, have already created a lesson, uh, you can just send a link to that video to your students and, and have them do it. But uh, these are some great ideas. Coach Wood's doing some longer lesson, like 20 minute lessons. Coach Perillo is doing more like game activity examples in his garage. Mike Morris is doing quick challenges. So similar to like a, a field day type challenge. And Derek's doing uh, different things with skills, like how to build a racket, racket challenges, um, and doing some different uh, at-home lessons like that. So check those out. And then uh, we could also take this time to hit some affective stuff. So for me, what I think affective is one of the most important things that we need to teach as teachers. And so this might be a really good time. You know, I know kindergarten through first, second grade, maybe not. Um, but if you're teaching older students, this is a great website to check out um, where you could, oh, sorry, where you could assign some learning or assign some videos and talk about really important life skills like perseverance. And the uh, guy that you see right here at the top, the one arm, he's a one arm basketball player. I think he's kind of the host of the, um, the site or the videos and talks to kids about overcoming challenges in each video. They kind of examine a different person's story and how they overcame challenges. So that could be a really useful um, tool to use for your students and teaching. <clears throat> and then I'm sure many of you already uh, follow Joey, Joey Fyth over at the physical educator.com, but he's putting out some really awesome distance learning um, resources, some really good quality videos, slideshows, worksheets. So I would definitely recommend checking him out as well. Uh, just finished this up a couple weeks ago. So this is our, our virtual field day uh, that we're doing at my school. And uh, many of you have probably seen the open phys ed virtual field day stuff. And I stole a lot of their games, uh, game ideas for mine. Um, but uh, if you click on that graphic, it'll take you to this little blog post where I kind of outline what I did for my school and just have one video with the directions. And then we're going to do four weeks. Um, that's how much time we have left in school. So every week I'm going to release two videos. So first week was the directions in the first video. Second week was the second video. And they're just real quick challenges, one minute each. And uh, this one's paper playing cornhole. Um, and I just explained it real quick. And then I gave an example of the challenge. So 60 minute timer and then what they're supposed to do. And for me, I just ask the kids to post the videos or pictures to our school's Facebook page or on Twitter. And, um, you know, I think uh, one of the things that I'm feeling right now and also that I know many other teachers are feeling that I've talked to is like you spend a lot of time creating these resources and then there's not very much engagement and not very much um, buy in from the parents and the kids. 
And honestly, I, I empathize with that, but I also empathize with the parents that are just so overwhelmed right now. So my thought going into this is, Hey, I hope this provides a little bit of fun for kids. They're missing their field day. And I totally understand if kids don't do it. And there's a lot of kids that will do it and they just won't post a video or won't post a picture about it. Um, I didn't have any kind of like scorecards being turned in or anything like that just because of knowing I didn't want to overwhelm parents. And um, that's also why we're rolling out only two videos a week because we just wanted to kind of provide a slow, um, slow roll to parents and teachers and uh, everybody's maxed right now. So if a couple kids do it, great. And I hope it provides some fun. I've already had a couple people um, share that their students were doing it. So um, don't expect, you know, full participation from your school, but put it out there and, you know, some kids and some families will make some really fun memories through it. Um, so you can go check those out and then also have a link to Open's virtual PE or a virtual field day page because they have a lot more ideas. I just chose a few challenges for mine. Um, so make sure you check that out. And then what about assessment? So that kind of just honestly depends on your school and what your school is deciding to do. Um, but for me, I just tried to make it as simple as possible. And our we're basing many of our grades for the end of the year off of what we already previously knew about students. And our uh, administration has um, agreed that there will be some assessments we can't do. Like I'm not going to be able to do a locomotor assessment on my first graders, which I normally do at the end of the year because I can't see them. So that just won't be able to be assessed this year. Um, but if you do, if you are required to do assessment, just try to do something super simple, like an activity log, a checklist, a Google form, a shared Google doc. Um, one of my t friends is a classroom teacher has a shared Google doc with his classroom and they go in each day and write one thing they're grateful for that day. Um, which I thought was a really cool idea. So maybe like you could have, if you're required to get info, like have a shared Google doc between your kids and then each kid goes in once a week and puts the activities they did that week or something like that. Flipgrid, just wanted to mention that. That's what my school is mainly using for the homeroom teachers. <coughs> and uh, it's a great way to, instead of doing like a live Zoom call, um, to allow like, basically as a teacher you put up a video and then your kids can respond in videos so it's not live your kids have time to make a good video to delete it and redo it if they want to and you can still have that interaction um and see your kids faces but uh without like all the technical difficulties or sometimes um, distractions of live like for example a zoom call so check that out um, it's really easy to set up and uh, it, you can also like provide a password if you want the video to be private and only provide it to your classroom things like that and ultimately just do your best and ask good questions um, one of my main things i try to do in my work life and my family life is just simplify 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 um, Anytime I'm frustrated, I try to step back and look at the big picture and, and just ask myself, what would this look like if it were easy? And what, what are some things I can do to make this better for students? And then especially right now in this time of virtual PE, I try to think about it from the parent perspective um, because many parents are both working, sometimes trying to both work from home with the kids at home. And it's just it's so overwhelming. Uh, and then you add that the stress and anxiety of the news and all of the new information we're getting each day. And, um, it just becomes a lot to handle. So try to be empathetic and, um, just do your best and forget the rest. And, um, that's it guys. I hope some of that was helpful. Um, I kind of went through it pretty quickly, but I have all the notes here, uh, at this link and I will provide this PDF, uh, the slides in PDF. And if you click on any of the links or the graphics, it should take you right to the, uh, places that we talked about. So if you got any questions, hit me up on social and I uh, hope you guys have an awesome day. Stay safe out there. And hopefully we won't be doing this virtual learning thing too much longer. Thanks for coming in and have an awesome day, guys. Catch you later.